Chapter 243 of Shulchan Aruch Or Hayim Laws of Shabbat discusses leasing a field, a bathhouse, or other properties that are owned by a Jew to a non Jew. The rule is that if people think that the property is run by a Jew and that the profits are collected by the Jew, by the Jewish owner, one cannot do so on Shabbat, even even if he uh, leases it to a non-Jew, and the non-Jew run, runs this property on his own and just pays the rent to the Jew, but if people think or know that this facility is rented, it is allowed to rent it out uh, to the non-Jew. Uh, in chapter 244, we talk about works that the non-Jew can perform for a Jew on Shabbat. And the first entry says the following, Posek imayno yudi ala melecha vekotetz damim, if one hires a non-Jew to do work for him, and he set the price for the work, and that that person, the worker, the non-Jew, chooses to do that work on Shabbat, it is okay as long as it is not done publicly. For example, if uh, one asked uh, a, uh, a non-Jew to write this is an example given Shohan Aruch to write a book for him, but today could be you're, you're dropping off something uh, at, the, um, at Staples to do copies or laundry uh, at, the, uh, uh, at the cleaners, your car at a, at, a, at a body shop, all these things. You could always uh, argue that you did not ask the, uh, the worker to do the work for you on Shabbat. It was their choice to do it on uh, on Shabbat, that's their own own decision. This even applies in, for someone who works in your house, in your household. And uh, let's say, for example, you have a um, a maid or a cleaning person who has to clean the house on Shabbat, and they have certain tasks uh, on hand. They could uh, choose to use a broom or a vacuum cleaner. If they use the vacuum cleaner, it's their own decision to do it that way to save time um, in doing the, their job. So now the problem would be the perception. So I would say that if there's no one at home and that person cleans the house or does whatever they have to do their way, it is not of our concern. But if we are at home and the perception is that something is done on Shabbat not in the right manner, it should be uh, it should be uh, uh, avoided. The um, one of the examples of things that are done publicly for a Jew is construction on Shabbat. This is very common, uh, construction uh, or uh, mowing the lawn or things like that. So let's start with mowing the lawn. That uh, we could uh, argue that it should be forbidden because people know who lives where and uh, whether there's a Jewish owner or not. On the other hand, since the uh, the lawnmowers have their own schedule and sometimes the only day that they could do it on Shabbat, uh, there is room to be lenient. However... Uh, for the spirit of Shabbat, it's definitely preferable not to have that going on with the noise and the um, and the smell, etc. It doesn't doesn't give the the right air for Shabbat. One should try to find um, a lawnmower that uh, could do it for him on um, on a weekday and not on Shabbat. Uh, regarding construction, is a more complicated issue because in many cases we know that construction is delayed uh, if you're trying to catch up uh, to to be able to finish uh, construction before the winter um, and rains uh, come you're in a you're in a tight spot we all know the situation where the uh, the uh, contractor says oh it'll be done in a month and then it becomes two months and it becomes three months and then before you know it the uh, the winter is around the corner and if you don't finish construction now you're going to be in uh, in serious trouble so there's a famous um, and the same is discussion by Rabbi Avadiyah Yosef in Yabi Omer, Volume 8, or Haim uh, 28. And he was asked by a con- rabbi of a congregation in, in, uh, in California regarding a synagogue that was built around the clock, including Shabbat and holidays, whether one um, could use that uh, synagogue at all or not. So uh, uh, the answer was there are two opposing opinions among the, uh, among the Rishonim, among the early sa- sages of medieval uh, of medieval uh, Europe, Rabbi Nutam considers allowing the building of a house on Shabbat 
if the contracting contractor was hired to do the job and is not paying is not being paid uh, per day. It's not day labor, but a project. So if that person is paid for the project, it's his choice whether he does it on Shabbat or on a regular day. On the other hand, Rabbi Yitzhak Riyazaken says it's forbidden because contractors are usually hired on a daily basis and the onlookers will think that the Jew ordered the non-Jew to perform work on Shabbat. It, interestingly enough, Rabbi Nutam himself, when he built his own, his own house, did not want to rely um, on that uh, more, on his own more lenient opinion. But it seems that this was a, a, a common problem at the time. A couple of years ago, there was a case in the uh, Syrian community of uh, New York and New Jersey when, uh, where two synagogues were built simultaneously, one in New Jersey, one in, one in Brooklyn, both by the same, belong to the same community or the same rabbi, and they were built around the clock and were built on Shabbat. Both of them, because of the problem of uh, pressing time, they had to complete construction in one place because of the zoning regulations of the city. The other one was because of the uh, because the winter was coming. So uh, the the uh, there was a debate around it because some people said that this this is not this is not the right thing to do. Um, well, others said this is the um, it's important to build a synagogue and. And we have to be there on Shabbat. The uh, and then going back to the other side, the problem of the rabbis who said who were against it said not only it's not just the uh, the fact that the synagogue is being built uh, on Shabbat, and even if we could find a uh, an argument to be lenient and to allow it, the problem is that people would say that the rabbis are uh, finding ways. To help themselves, which is their issue. When it's their issue, then they find a solution. So there is something in it, and we really have to look into it in general. We have this problem that, uh, or phenomenon, that when the posek is empathetic to the situation, it is easier for that posek to find a solution. Um, Rabbi uh, Yosef Mishash, for example, says it that uh, regarding using. Um, certain lenient opinions on Yom Tov, he says that he, knows, he knew many rabbis who were against it, but when it, it had to do with their own uh, with their own personal situations, they were okay with it. So, however, we go back to Shohan Aruch, and uh, what we find in Shohan Aruch, in chapters 2, 243 to 247, that we're discussing now, um, they, we actually see that the, the rabbis and the poskim offer many different solutions to bypass the prohibition. The reason for that is that they knew that there is no biblical prohibition here, as we mentioned in the previous uh, discussion. By biblical law, one can tell a non-Jew to do anything for him on Shabbat, as long as the we're not talking about a state of slavery. Thank God, um, a hired person or a volunteer can do anything for you on Shabbat, and it is the rabbis who put the fence and prevented this from being done because they were afraid that we are going to completely erode the character of Shabbat. With all that, since they knew it's not a biblical prohibition, and since they understood that they cannot completely stop commerce or some normal activities on Shabbat, uh, they were more lenient, especially, and that was especially uh, true when you lived among non-Jews. Uh, and... Uh, to add to that, there is a there is a certain difference in the uh, uh, in the approach of the poskim in general to uh, the ideas of partnerships with the with non Jews, where profit comes in on Shabbat, etc. Because uh, of the the change in the uh, uh, the level of anti semitism or animosity towards Jews in the past, when uh, especially in Europe there was a there was a very strong animosity towards Jews, and everything that that seemed as a uh, disrespectful behavior of Jews towards their own legal system brought mockery and criticism from uh, from their um, from their neighbors. So they would say, "Oh, look at these Jews! This is what they do on Shabbat. Uh, they don't respect their own laws." Today, it's a little different. There's room to be lenient, uh, but we we'll look at uh, what the uh, Moshe Isalis in the Haggah. The Rama, what he writes, 
in uh, chap- in 245.1, he writes, Yesh matirin, uvevsed gadol yesh lisamoch alehem. He says, if there is fear, there is a fear uh, that there will be great financial loss, you could rely on the lenient opinions. And in uh, 246.5, he says, kol tzadadei yeterim ele, there's a several uh, leniencies that are mentioned there. He says those are not just uh, opinions. Those are, this is the law, and you could rely on it when you need. So, going back to the construction on Shabbat, even though ideally it is better not to do so, it's better not to have the your contractor as a construction work on Shabbat. But if there is a pressing need, let's uh, mitzvah, such in this case. Uh, you need the synagogue to be built on time so people can attend uh, services, or it's uh, even if it's your own house. But uh, if the winter comes before you finish building, you will have nowhere to stay, or you'll have to stay with your in-laws and uh, fights will ensue. Then uh, it is okay to let the contractors work on on their own schedule. But it should be sort of a uh, maybe even of a uh, non-written agreement saying, "Listen, I'm paying you." For the job, and you just try to make it happen as uh, as uh, uh, as soon as possible on your terms. And if they choose to work on Shabbat, it's fine. We get to the more um, common things beyond beyond those big uh, uh, project of construction or something that was a regular schedule like uh, uh, mowing the lawn, and that is the daily situations of uh, uh, a dark room. The AC is not on. The heat is not on. Uh, you need uh, someone to do something for you in the synagogue. So these um, these situations, the the rule of thumb is this: yeah, we have to know whether the whether the work at hand is a biblical prohibition or a rabbinic prohibition. That's important because there's a concept of shvut de shvut <clears throat> of two rabbinical prohibitions. When when the reason to forbid something is uh, and a combination of two rabbinical prohibitions called Shvut de Shvut on Shabbat, then it would be okay. So, for example, telling a non-Jew to do a to perform a work which is in itself rabbinical and not biblical would be allowed on Shabbat. So, one has to know what is the rabbanan, what is the Vaita, and then that we'll discuss more as we go along. Um, and in addition, when there is a uh, an argument of great need. It's called Tzorich Mitzvah, Tzorich Rabim. Uh, either it's for a mitzvah, for example, in the synagogue, you need the light, you need the AC. You could tell the Nanju directly, you know, we need that because you have the lenient opinion, of, the lenient uh, factor of Tzorich Mitzvah, and also it's for the need of the community. Um, another uh, lenient factor is the uh, is the issue of... Uh, uh, on Shabbat, one has to enjoy the Shabbat. So, when you have a situation that you know that because of um, avoiding telling the Nanju to do work for you, you're going to suffer on Shabbat, then uh, it is okay to tell the Nanju directly, this is what we need. Um, an example is uh, brought by the Hatam Sofer, and he says this, Bazman azeh shenit parsem etzel agoyim en shishen shum isur etzelu l'asud v'shabbat al-edei goyim, Azil ta'am zeshit hilul Hashem. says, now that the non-Jews, already at the time of the Hatam Sofer, about 250 years ago, he says, now people know that by by Jewish law, it is allowed to have a non-Jew work for you on Shabbat, so we do not have to be afraid of mockery. But then he has another uh, another situation. It is, Kemoshe nahagu lechamem et bet ha-horef etzel Yisrael b'Shabbat. It was uh, customary in Europe, to have a non-Jew uh, light the fire in the fireplace on Shabbat. And that's a biblical prohibition. When we talk about uh, turning on the heat, the AC, the um, or the light, in, mo- in most cases it's a rabbinical, it's the Rabbanan and not the Raita. But when you, we talk about medieval Europe and uh, lighting the fireplace, setting fire on Shabbat, that is Midoraita, uh, that is biblical. How is that possible? So, uh, it says, Bizmanenu shenafotsu Yisrael b'aratzot ha-tzafon akarim od bimea horef v'otzrechu lahem b'shabbat anur b'tahoref al-edea goyim. It says, in our time, 
we will live in cold countries, and during the winter, if we don't uh, we don't light fire at the fireplace, people are going to suffer. Yeah, they can sit with blankets, wrap with blankets the whole Shabbat, but that's not on a Shabbat. So, uh, and since the goyim, the non-Jews themselves think this is the way Shabbat works, this is okay. So we'll talk about more details in the next uh, in the next discussion about partnership and about um, situations such as uh, uh, having to present at a conference or a trade show. What happens when you have it has to be open on Shabbat? But um, the rule of thumb, as I said, regarding the works that you know, have to be performed on a regular basis, either in the synagogue or at home, is you have to know whether this uh, task is midorait or midrabanan. It's important to know the difference. And of course, it takes learning. Um, but the other thing is, if you have one of those lenient factors that uh, not doing this thing will cause uh, suffering and loss of onik Shabbat, or there's a need for mitzvah, for someone who's not feeling well, uh, for the prayer or other things, or the tzor chabim, it's for the community, it is allowed to perform that task on Shabbat by telling an non-Jew to do it, even if you tell him directly. If you're not sure whether this task is biblical or rabbinical, the solution is, and I know it sounds like a uh, like legal fiction, but uh, until we learn it thoroughly, this is an easy solution, is to tell one person to tell another uh, to say to do it uh, on Shabbat, and then uh, it becomes Shavuot the Shavuot, it becomes a secondary rabbinical prohibition. Have a great day.